Mad Dogs. It's a great film. It's a film about four men in their 40s who are on a trip, they think, to see an old friend. Um, and they're all at a bit of a crossroads in their lives. It's funny, but it's also quite savage and it's quite dark. And it's really about friendship and about whether friendship, whether this friendship's going to survive the horrors these boys are going to go through. I mean, I've never stopped experimenting. I just, I mean, I love, I did a firm, some films like First Marriages and Deaths and Low Winter Sun and Pierpoint, where you have to keep on exploring the, the, the medium and what you're going to do and how you're going to make it work. I think what the Coen brothers do is they just, they just sometimes put things in your face, and this is, some of this is very in your face as a, as a piece of work. It's quite brave and it's quite dangerous, and it's, um, it's got a different sort of edge to it. So it's not like we're just observing people. We actually are at times with the camera and with the way we're shooting it putting ourselves almost in, in their place at times. And it's Hitchcock did it in, as part of his work, and you know, he was a, a master at it. So we're just trying to play with some of those genres and, and have some, some fun with it as well. One of the most fantastic scenes which we shot was the, where the boys chop Alvo's hands off to make it look like a Serbian mafia killing, which is, I think, extremely funny, and it will be extremely funny. Slightly revolting, but very entertaining. And at the end, they realise they've lost a foot and they can't find the foot. So that was my highlight so far in terms of the film. And the other highlight was being, uh, being filming on a small beach and then having to go to get back and get back on the boat in a swell that was about 15 feet. And then we were get, being pushed along in this swell. The actors were down below putting their life jackets on and I was hanging on the top and there were dolphins going by. It was fantastic. So that was the best bit for me. Nothing to do with the film, but great, great moment. We've got a, a very clever guy called Sandy who's actually made the corpse for Aldo, which we see a lot of after his murder. Um, but obviously I have to match the wounds that are inflicted on Ben Chaplin, who plays Aldo, to the corpse. So I've, I've been involved very much in the corpse and working out where the bullets will be and to make it the most practical for me in terms of re replicating it on, 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 the, on the real actor. I have to, I've looked at a lot of very gruesome pictures in my time, which I wouldn't recommend, but it, it's necessary. Um, you know, I think you have to be as realistic as you can, and, and things like, like bullet hits, for instance, to the head, which is what happens to, to one of the characters. There's an armature inside this body, and you can see that the arms move like, like well, there's a ball and joint socket in there and the elbow, so we can move them around and set the body in any position we want. Uh, similarly, the legs, legs all move, and because at some point during the story the legs come off and the arms come off, they have to be made in such a way that they are detachable, so that these are all bolt-on hands and arms which can come off as and when required. And obviously because of the, the way he dies, he's um, shot in the front of the head. And I don't think really that bullet hits, but the, front, the, the entry wound is quite small, but the exit wound is quite big, which is why another good reason for using the dummy, because obviously on an actor you can't take away, you can only add. The idea in, in this is that from the second, from the time that Alv was, Alv would die, the guys stay in the same clothes and just get more and more and more dirty and distressed so which is why we have rather a lot of you know one shirt you know we've got ten of them um, and you know it sounds on the on paper it looked like this was you know a job from heaven it would be really really easy but in fact because they're all pale and British they had the color has to be changed and that has to be because that has to be controlled and uh, that has an Im that's having an impact on on the clothing. So, you know, we've got doubles, triples, multiples of it. We've got a system here where we haven't brought the traditional Hollywood base camp trailer city with us. We've actually hired another villa, which is in within walking distance of our set. It has been a very user-friendly way of working here, and I think it has given the shoot an atmosphere that is good and calm and it's as if we're going to work in the fields. We walk between the unit base and the villa and if there's anything that I'm very pleased about about choosing this location is we've been able to set it up in a slightly unconventional way for television drama of this type and in the villa we hired I'm very pleased to say we found this little larder with marble shelves and instead of having cheese and olives and goodness knows what the farmer would have kept in there, we've got our film stock at a lovely even temperature. So while the camera car is baking, our stock is at a consistent temperature. So there have been little advantages to 
sh shooting and choosing this way of working. The first two eps were pretty much solid um, and have been throughout and um, three and four kind of drifted around a little bit um, and but the actual outcome has always been pretty much as was expected and um, you know there is a twist and you don't really know who the enemy is you don't know whether it's corrupt cops whether it's a Serbian mafia whether there is somebody else involved it's it's a tricky thriller to try and sort of unfathom um, and that hasn't really changed we did change the end a bit to make it a bit clearer and we've also got um, uh, a character a shady character called Dominic who sort of hovers over the whole event really um, and it turns out that you know that, that he's pretty influential right at the end so it's left nicely for a second series, to be honest with you.